So if you're watching this video, I sure hope you're at home sitting in your easy chair and not a thousand miles from home at a gas station in the middle of nowhere like I was when my Ford V10 went into a no crank situation. Now, no crank situation being different than a no start situation in that when I turned the key, I heard absolutely nothing. There was no crank. So what I want to do is go through the diagnosis that I did to try to figure out what the problem was. Well, the first thing you want to do is put your foot on the brake pedal, okay? Before you try to start it. There's many vehicles that are new that require you to have your foot on the brake in order to start them. Um, that's not the case with mine, but uh, you want to start simple. Once you've done that, you'll move on to the second step. And that's going to be checking the neutral start safety switch. So you need to put your key in, turn it to your position. You're going to have to have your foot on the brake. And you want to cycle your gear shift lever down and back up. What you're going to find is that if your vehicle is not in park or neutral, it won't start. That is a safety feature. It's on all new vehicles. So these gear shifts will get a little sloppy over time and you'll be able to see that down here. Now, mine's not too bad. Um, you know, it still works. Uh, neutral safety is not my problem. But as you turn the key, you know, you might need to wiggle this a little bit. And if it starts to crank, then you found your problem, okay? So if that's not your issue, the next thing you wanna try is here in the ignition switch. You're gonna put the key in, and sometimes these get worn, and you actually wanna push in on the key as you turn. And you might actually even wiggle this around a little bit. Sometimes the contacts in there, as they start to get older, um, you know, they won't catch every time. So try that, see if that works. If not, we'll go outside and we'll look at the fourth thing that you can try. All right, so the next thing you wanna check is under the hood and this is the power distribution box. This is where all of your fuses and relays are located for your chassis. First trick is to get this thing open. In the lower corner, there's a little lever that you need to pull and it will open up this cover. Trust me, I pulled on the side, the top, I just about ripped the cover off this thing just trying to figure out how to get it open. It's hidden pretty well. On the side here, you've got um, your index to, to what all the components are inside this box kind of hard to read. If you still have your manual, it's laid out pretty nice in there, so um, I would recommend looking there. For me, it's the third relay in is the starter relay. Now what you want to do is you want to put your finger on this relay and have somebody inside turn the key, try to start the motor home. What's going to happen is you should feel a click on this relay. If you don't, the problem is somewhere between your ignition switch and this relay, possibly the relay itself. Uh, one good thing is all three of these relays in here are the same part number. So I believe the second one here, I think is the air conditioner. You could pull the relay from the air conditioner, put it in the starter, and at least get yourself running. That's more important than the air conditioner. Also, one of these fuses down here, I don't know the number right offhand, um, is part of that starter relay. So check the fuse, you know, check the obvious stuff. The next thing is if your relay's clicking but you're still not starting, no crank, then uh, you need to look at the starter solenoid. And that's what I'm gonna show here next. Okay, so here's a brand new starter for this Ford V10. You've got a Napa part number 2449292. Um, that's the exact same starter that was in the coach. Uh, Napa was great. They did a warranty exchange, no questions asked, uh, took care of the problem. They had it in stock, um, so everything was great there. Um, so this here is the starter solenoid, what we're concerned with. So um, you might be familiar with the old Fords, used to have a solenoid on the fender, and then down here you had a Bendix. Well now um, everything's kind of in one. This is where they're putting on most new vehicles. Um, so. Let me explain a little bit about the solenoid. So the solenoid actually does a couple things. First of all, this wire here, this is the one that's gonna come down from your starter relay. And it's energized to 12 volts when you turn the key. And it basically is gonna activate a switch inside the solenoid. And that switch is gonna do two things. Inside of here, there's a little plunger that pushes out, which ends up pushing out a fork, which pulls this gear out to engage the flywheel. 
The second thing that's going to happen is this terminal here is where your 12 volt main battery cable is. It's going to be the large red cable. It's going to send power from here through the switch to this bottom terminal, which is basically going to spin your starter. So you could have a couple problems. If everything up to this point has uh, seemed to work fine, you've got two things to check on the starter. The first thing you wanna do is you're gonna to need to be under the vehicle. So make sure the brake is on, it's in park, chalk the wheels, do whatever you gotta to do to make sure that thing is not gonna roll because you're gonna be underneath it. Have somebody turn the key. You'll have a couple different things that are possibilities. If you hear this click, which means it's probably pushing this plunger out to engage um, the starting gear. That means your solenoid is probably okay, and it could actually be your starter that's having a problem spinning. What you'd wanna do in that case is get yourself a rock, a hammer, or something, and tap on the starter. You might be able to jar those brushes loose or anything that, that might be sticking in there, and that might get you going. Um, if that's not the case and, and you actually don't have any movement um, here on your solenoid, there's another trick that you can try. You're going to need yourself a screwdriver and you can actually connect this terminal with this terminal, okay, and try to activate it that way. If that doesn't work, then you go to the next phase, which is to connect this big terminal with this big terminal. So you're essentially bypassing the solenoid. You're going to get a little bit of a spark, um, but it should crank the engine. When you're doing that, the key needs to be in the on position if you want to actually start the vehicle. So you can't leave the key out. It's actually got to be on, turn to the on position, put the screwdriver across. If that's your problem, it should crank and get the engine running. Now, what was wrong with mine? I truly believe the problem is a heat issue. If you take a look underneath the coach, the starter is sitting in there like this, and you have your exhaust right here. It's probably five or six inches away from this solenoid. So I think what we're all experiencing is kind of a heat soak situation. Electronics do not like heat, and you've got this thing sitting right next to the exhaust. So over time, I think it's degrading the solenoid and that's why it's uh, failing. It seemed to um, play into what happened with mine because as I sat there doing my diagnostics, trying, wiggling, you know, relays and checking fuses, about 15 minutes later, I went in, turned the key, and it fired right up. So at that time, I didn't really know what fixed it. Maybe it was a wiggle in the relay, maybe it was the fuse, who knows. Um, two days later, exact same thing happened to me stopped at a gas station put fuel in boom nothing no crank whatsoever i sat there and waited for about 15 minutes didn't touch anything turn the key it fired right off so that seemed to me to indicate it was a heat problem now when i removed the old starter it had this cap here that was covering um, these terminals kind of just as protection when I popped that cap off and I took a look at it, it's actually melted on the bottom. So this is telling me that, you know, it's had some serious heat getting near this thing, enough to melt this plastic. So what am I going to do to solve that? Well, Napa also carries this product here. This is a starter heat shield. Um, this thing will basically, um, it's kind of like a sock. It's going to wrap around the starter and it's going to prevent a lot of that radiant heat. There's a, a lot of different um, styles that you can buy. There's a metal heat shield, there's this sock, you know, whatever you choose is going to help. So you need to do something to prevent the heat from getting to this starter solenoid. Okay, so. Um, the last thing I want to mention is you'll notice there's a little tag on here and basically it says, hey, don't remove this wire, cut your old one, splice it into here. The reason they're telling you that, this terminal right here is prone to breaking. If you put a wrench on here and you try to take this nut off, most of the time you end up breaking this entire stud off of here, which makes the starter completely useless. So the manufacturers have said, hey, we're going to give you a pigtail. 
put your wire on there. We're even going to give you a little heat shrink here that you're basically going to pull up after you um, connect it, crimp it. For me, I'm also going to solder it, put the heat shrink over and take care of it. So I just wanted to point that out. So next is um, I'm going to install the starter. It's a pretty simple procedure. There's only three uh, bolts to put on here. And I believe that's going to solve my problem. So hopefully this video will help you in diagnosing what your problem is, give you some ideas. Um, if it's useful, if you like it, please hit the like. Um, subscribe to the channel. I plan on putting a lot more videos out there as I learn more about my Class A um, motorhome. And thanks for watching.